the slight difference between uh, source criticism and form criticism uh, is that whereas source criticism in general uh, looks back for uh, written literary sources, maybe even source documents, uh, form criticism goes a step further, uh, not looking for uh, written precursors, but rather oral precursors. So uh, form criticism takes a little bit of a different starting point where they would believe that earlier Israelite society was pre-literate. Uh, even having um, no writing, uh, hardly any writing at all up until the monarchy. Uh, so talking about the time of David and uh, Solomon there, uh, which would mean if writing was just coming up uh, around the time of David and Solomon, then can we really be justified in seeing larger literary pieces like the prophet Isaiah or something coming into being so early uh, with the origins of writing? Uh, now, of course, that's been refuted. Right, uh, because we have writing as far back as 3400 BC, uh, which is uh, notably about 2,000 years prior to even Moses. Um, uh, so that's a, a very significant time frame for writing being uh, in existence. But um, that's uh, reflecting back on Hermann Gunkel. Right, we have more information now than he did uh, then. So uh, what Hermann Gunkel just mentioned him, the kind of the founder of the form critical movement, did was. Uh, and his dates, that just what, for reference, uh, you've got here 1862 to 1932, just so people know. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so uh, so Gunkel, um, writing uh, fairly early, was trying to approach the Bible in terms of that pre-literary setting uh, of the people. And he would say that uh, the earlier forms of the Bible have to reflect this oral precursor. Uh, and so what he began to do is try to investigate what those oral precursors might look like. And he um, talked about it in terms of category of two important things, uh, getung uh, and sitzimlin. Uh, a getung uh, for Gunkel was uh, kind of the uh, formal oral speech unit that might have been used uh, in the life uh, of Israel. Uh, important distinction here, a getung is not genre. Right. If you're talking genre, you're thinking literary and literary development that didn't exist yet. Right. A, a getung is more of a, a typical speech pattern uh, that you might expect uh, to uh, be brought about in, in particular social situations. Uh, so, it's like a uh, meme. It's like an oral meme. I know uh, yeah, like meme yeah, is yeah, a yeah, more yeah. current thing, but that comes from the world of. Uh, genetics, uh, ultimately, but it's like this thing that, you know, you can imagine if I tell a story and then someone else tells the story, they're getting it from me, but it might mutate. Right. And then you could right. try to backtrack those things. And I suppose the, the strand that started with me or wherever I heard it, would that be called the Gatung, that family of, of stories? Yeah, that, that kind of family of stories, maybe one distinction here for, for Gunkel is he was a little bit more uh, scientific in that he was looking for like a pure gatong, like a, a pure oral form uh, that had formal categories that every uh, aspect of speech must then uh, conform to. Really? Uh, th uh, so this is an aspect that is later corrected by uh, form critics a little later on. Uh, but Gunkel was uh, a little bit more scientific uh, than that, as he was wanting very formal categories. And um, <clears throat> then some of the later form critics are like, well, actually, maybe this pure form, this pure guitar uh, doesn't actually exist, uh, which it doesn't. Um, now, just for my own clarity, so we're speaking of like an ideal or you know, like there is one universal guitar or there for each for each thing we're studying. For each now what's in you know recorded in literature in the bible began with an oral tradition is he looking for the a bunch of getungs getungen um yeah yeah, uh, yeah he for is. each so, for each unit yeah so he okay. will uh, classify different types of getungen as, as you were saying so uh one um getung that he talks about in terms of the psalms would be a lament uh, right and so that would be i a get it okay uh, getung. but they're not genre uh, because genres are literary right okay right so a, a getung is essentially a, a conventional pattern uh the conventional pattern that would be used uh, to so, give so a in my type in my uh, bad illustrations are like a knock knock joke would be yeah. a getung yeah okay. yeah exactly uh, exactly we and know so, the form and, and whatever yeah 
And, and the reason why uh, he wants it to be uh, so much more strict is because um, a particular gatung, uh, and there are many of them, right? Um, Covenant lawsuit uh, would be another one. Um, uh, Praise him would be another one. Um, he wants all of them to be anchored in a particular what he calls sitzim libin, uh, which is uh, setting in life. Uh, now, setting in life, um, I find it to be a, a confusing concept uh, uh, among uh, beginning students because uh, they hear sitzim libin setting in life and they think historical context. Uh, that's not what Gunkel means by sitzim libin. Uh, sitzim libin is not the historical context to which something would be proclaimed. It is a social context from which something would arise. Right. Right. And so, uh, so for example, uh, a sitzim libin might be something like um, a temple worship service, right? Uh, it will be a, a, a temple service from which a praise hymn could then arise and then later be uh, collected into a psalm. It could be uh, a funeral would be something that a sitzim libin that a lament could arise and then uh, be later um, uh, crystallized in the form that we have it today. Uh, and so what Gunkel tries to do is he tries to um, look at the biblical text and work his way back to these earlier oral sources uh, and especially use that uh, as a window into Sitzim Levin. Right? It's important to note that uh, while form criticism has been used, uh, even among conservative scholars, as a uh, helpful tool for looking at uh, patterns that we might observe in a text, uh, the ultimate goal of form criticism is not observing patterns in the text. The ultimate goal of form criticism is getting to that setting in life. Uh, it's about social analysis and, and seeing those social settings uh, among the people of God from which these things uh, could arise. Uh, another thing to note, uh, because it is oral and because it does arise from these uh, social settings, they are generally very short speech units, right? A uh, handful of verses, couple of verses uh, here and there uh, that are then later, uh, these oral sources, then later collected, uh, adapted, and then uh, written down right, by uh, later uh, redactors or, or editors uh, gathering these oral sources together. Uh, so the goal of form criticism then is to take what had been uh, redacted or edited and, and get back to those oral uh, precursors, the oral precursors uh, to the text in order to more properly analyze the setting in life, the social setting uh, from which the text uh, could have arisen. 